Teresa Cabarrus, Madame Tallien, the 31st of July 1773 to the 15th of January 1835, was a Spanish-born French noble, salon holder, and social figure during the Revolution. Later, she became Princess of Chaimé. Topic: Life. Topic. Early life She was born Juana Maria Ignacia Teresa de Cabarrus y Galabert in Carabanchal Alto, Madrid, Spain to François Cabarrus, an ethnic Basque French-born Spanish financier, and Maria Antonia Galabert, the daughter of a French industrialist based in Spain. Teresa's father founded and governed the Bank of San Carlos, which became the Royal Bank of Spain, and was King Joseph I of Spain's Minister of Finance. In 1789, he was ennobled by King Charles IV of Spain with the title of Count. From 1778 to 1783, Teresa was raised by nuns in France. She was a student of the painter Jean-Baptiste Isabey. She returned home to the family castle briefly in 1785, and then her father sent her back to France at 12 years old to complete her education and get married. The first of her many love affairs was with Alexandre de Laborde, however, the young couple was forced to separate as de Laborde's powerful father, Jean-Joseph de Laborde, disapproved of her. Cabarrus then arranged for his very beautiful daughter to marry a rich, powerful Frenchman in order to strengthen his position in France. On 21 February 1788 Teresa was married to Jean-Jacques Devin Fontenay 1762-1817, the last Marquis de Fontenay, a wealthy aristocrat described as small, red and ugly. The bride was 14 years old. Even though in the 1780s Teresa had begun to take an interest in liberalism and the principles of the revolution, she was presented at the court of King Louis XVI. The newlyweds visited the royal court of Spain as well. On 2 May 1789 Teresa had a son, Devin Théodore de Fontenay 1789 whose father was perhaps Félix Le Pelletier de Saint-Fargeau, brother of Louis-Michel Le Pelletier de Saint-Fargeau. When her husband fled at the outbreak of the Revolution in 1789, she resumed her maiden name and obtained a divorce in 1791. She took refuge in Bordeaux, where she was supported by her uncle and his family. While in Bordeaux she met Jean Lambert Tallien, commissioner of the National Convention at the theatre. Some time later she began an affair with him. In December 1793 she appeared as the goddess of reason at a large parade organized in Bordeaux by Tallien and his fellow commissioner Isabeau to celebrate the Feast of Reason. <laughs> Thermidor and Directory In February 1794, Tallien was denounced by Robespierre for moderation and the easing of repression. Robespierre also reproached him for his liaison with one Cabarrus, an ex-noble, who gets him to pardon many enemies of the Republic she accompanied Tallien when he went to Paris to justify his conduct, only to be imprisoned on Maximilien Robespierre's orders first in La Force prison, then in Carmes prison where she met Joséphine de Beauharnais. Tallien was one of the chief organizers of the Thermidorian reaction which overthrew Robespierre. On 27 July 1794, Nine Tallien had Theresa and Joséphine de Beauharnais freed from prison and became one of the leading figures in French political life. Theresa was a moderating influence on her husband. After the outbreak of the Thermidorian reaction, she earned the moniker Notre Dame de Thermidor, Our Lady of Thermidor, as the person who was most likely to intervene in favor of the detained. Pregnant with their daughter, she married Tallien on 26 December 1794. Their marriage was relatively short-lived however as Teresa began divorce proceedings against Tallien in February 1797. Tallien accompanied Napoleon to Egypt but was captured by the British on his voyage back to France and held prisoner. On his release in 1802, the divorce was finalized, Teresa became one of the leaders of Parisian social life. Her salon was famous and she was one of the originators of the Greek revival directoire style women's fashions of the French directory period. She was a very colorful figure, one story is that she was said to bathe in the juice of strawberries for their healing properties. She once arrived at the Tuileries Palace, then the chief residence of Napoleon Bonaparte, supported by a black page, with eight sapphire rings and six toe rings, a gold bracelet on each ankle and nine bracelets on each arm. 
To top the look off Teresa had a headband covered in rubies. On another occasion she appeared at the Paris Opera wearing a white silk dress without sleeves and not wearing any underwear. Talleyrand commented, Il n'est pas possible de s'exposer plus somptuousement. One could not be more sumptuously unclothed. Marriage to Riquette After her divorce from Talian Teresa had a brief flirtation with Napoleon. She then moved first to the powerful Paul Barris, whose former mistress was Napoleon's first wife Josephine, then to the millionaire speculator Gabriel Julian Ouvert with whom she had four children, and finally, attempting to regain respectability and to get away from Paris, she married François-Joseph Philippe de Riquette, Comte de Caraman. On the 22nd of August 1805 he had become the 16th Prince of Chaimé after the death of his childless uncle in 1804. She spent the rest of her life first in Paris, then on the Chimay Estates now in Belgium. After the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, these became part of the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. She had become one of the most famous women of her age, and she resented this role. Once when she appeared at the Louvre accompanied by her children, so many spectators flocked to see her up close, that she had to escape down a staircase to save herself. The marriage to Caraman meant that she returned to the class in which she had been born, and educated. The couple invited musicians such as Daniel Auber, Rodolphe Kreutzer, Luigi Cherubini, Charles de Berrio and Maria Malibran to Paris and later to Chaimé, where Teresa held a little court. Cherubini composed his Messa Nfa Major Dite Messa de Chaime at their castle there in 1809, derived from a Kyrie and Gloria he wrote in 1808 for the village church of Chaime. Teresa died in Chaime, where she was interred with Francois Joseph de Riquette under the sacristy of the local church where a memorial stands to her memory. She bore ten children during her various liaisons, including Joseph de Riquette, first son of Francois Joseph Philippe, who became the 17th Prince of Chaime in 1843. Children Teresa bore ten children by various husbands and lovers. Antoine Francois Julien Theodore Denis Ignace de Fontenay, 1789 Rose Thermidor Laura Josephine Tallien, 1795 married Count Felix de Narbonne Pellet in 1815. One child by Barris, born in 1797, who died at birth. Ouvert was allegedly the father of four of her children, born during her marriage to Talian. Clemence Isor Therese Italian married Colonel Hyacinth Devoe, no issue, as a widow she became a nun. Jules Adolphe Edouard Talian de Cabarrus, Dr. Cabarrus, married Harriet Kirkpatrick. Clarisse Thérèse Ouvert married Achelet Ferdinand Brunentière in 1826. Auguste Stéphanie Coralie Thérèse Ouvert married Amédée Ferdinand Mossin de Vaux, son of the Baron of Vaux. In 1822, she and Riquette had three children together. Joseph Philippe de Riquette, 1808 17th Prince de Chaimé, Prince de Caraman, married Emily Pellepre. Michel Gabriel Alphonse Ferdinand de Riquette, 1810 to 1865, father of Marie Clotilde Elizabeth Louise de Riquette, Comtesse de Mercy Argento. Marie Auguste Louise Thérèse Valentine de Riquette, 1815 to 1876, married Georges Marquis du Halle Coaquin. Topic: Cultural references. As Teresa Cabarrus, she is a prominent character in Baroness Orsi's novel, The Triumph of the Scarlet Pimpernel. She was played by Carolyn Jones in the 1954 film Desiree, starring Marlon Brando, and by Florence Pernell in the 2002 miniseries Napoleon. <laughs>